These are rational expressions with dividing, just like we do with fractions. When we're dividing fractions, our first step is always to multiply by the reciprocal. So for these ones, our first step, same thing. First step, when you're seeing fractions that you're dividing, you're going to rewrite it with multiplication of the reciprocal. Now, what does it mean when that squared is on the outside of that 7n? The whole thing is being squared. And so it would be 7n times 7n. Does it make sense that I could change that to be 49n squared? That is a huge number. It's almost 50. Wow. It could be worse. Yes. Now, this is a good example where we've got almost big numbers like 49, right? I would say that that's an almost big number. It's still within our 10 times table. But as soon as we multiply that 49 times 4, whoo, like that's almost 200. That's really almost a big number especially for mental math. So this is a good example that I am not going to multiply the tops together and multiply the bottoms together. I'm going to look for ways that I can simplify first. Can you see with the 7 and the 49, you could simplify that? Because 7 over 49 is the same as 1 7th. So you cancel them out and rewrite the simplified fraction. 12 over 4, that simplifies to be negative 3. So we'd have negative 3 over 1. I could simplify the ends too, but I think I'm going to write things out. Otherwise, we're going to have too many lines and get confused. So now that we've simplified the numbers, when I multiply the top across, can you see that I'm going to get negative 3n cubed? And on the bottom, 1 times 7 will be 7n squared. So just so that we don't get too carried away and get lost along the way, I still can simplify this more. What would happen with the n cubed on top and n squared on the bottom? Only one n on the top. So there is our simplified answer. Part B. Again, we see a divide. The first thing we're going to do, dividing is the same as multiplying by that reciprocal. And we'll do that before we do any canceling. Now, this one's already prefactored for us, which is nice. It's all multiplying. Are there any binomials that are identical? Yes, this x minus 3 will cancel with that x minus 3. See anything else that would cancel? The x. Choo, choo. Do you want to simplify any of the numbers, or do you want to just write out the next step? Write out the next step. So now. We could, we could do the 5 and the 10 if we wanted to, but someone asked to write it out next. So what do I have left on top? I've got 5 times 3. That will be 15 times by the x plus 5 over. And on the bottom, I have 2 times 10. That will be 20. And that's all that's left on the bottom. Now you could look at the numbers. 15 over 20, can you simplify that? That simplifies to 3 over 4, and that is simplified completely. Now, with the first, with the second question, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Okay, so in the, if, if I asked you this question on the test and I said simplify, I would expect you just to write this, okay? Now, what they have at the bottom of the page there, they are also listing our non-permissible values. 
If I asked this on a test, I would also say, can you say the non-permissible values for the question? So if I said, what are the non-permissible values for part B? Okay. What we would look at is you know that you're not allowed to divide by zero anywhere. Okay. So we're looking, where are we dividing by zero? Can you see that you're dividing? Let's do take out our highlighter. Can you see that you're dividing right here? Yes? Can you see that you're dividing right here? So those can never equal zero. Now on the first yellow highlighter, okay, what can't x be? X can't be zero. Okay? So one of our non-permissible values is x can't be zero. In our second yellow highlighted part, it's already factored. In the first part, x can't be zero, but we've already said that. In the second part, x can't be x can't be negative 5. So we'd add that one as well. Now there's a third non-permissible value. I'm going to take out a different highlighter, different color. This whole thing here is divided, right? Because this original answer says this divided by this, okay? And we see it in part B that here we have another part where we're dividing. So x can't be 3 as a result. Oops, that's a big highlighter. Because if x is 3, this fraction here, the 3 on the top, would make that fraction equal 0, and you're dividing by 0 then. And it shows up in the second part when we flip and multiply by the reciprocal. So the key is, when you're checking for non-permissible values in a rational expression like part b, you have to check everywhere where you're dividing. So that showed up with the two yellow ones that we had at the beginning. But then when we look at the second step right here, we have another place that we're dividing. That's where we have another non-permissible value. And that's because that's what would make this whole fraction 0 at the beginning and you're dividing by that as well. So there's three non-permissible values in this one. x can't be 0, x can't be negative 5, and x can't be 3. So in a question, if I ask you simplifying, you don't have to say the non-permissible values. You'll notice in the answer key of the textbook, they always do, just so that you can see them. On a test or on the exam, they'll say simplify, and then there'll be a part B or they'll say in the original questions and state all the non-permissible values for the question. So questions you can do for this one are for 5b. For 5b, 6c and d, and 11 Oh, those are for, for A and B. Yeah, so those are the questions you can do for both of those parts.